the stream on. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, good morning, good morning. My chat box is broken. Oh, it works. Yay. Morning, Elise. <laughs> Can everyone hear me fine? Yes, no. Yes. Alright, so today my video got taken down from last week's. So I'm gonna stop using IBJJF videos because Flow Grappling keeps sending me a bunch of shit. So I can't use Flow Grappling videos anymore. So I have to find really. I can only use other videos that's not from Flow Grappling until they tell me off. But for now. Let's go see. I don't know. Like, I've used like four of their videos so far, right? And I only got copy striked on one of them. But I might get banned if I keep doing that, so I need to stop. Especially because it's not my page as well. Alright, um, let's see. Today's second part of passing. I'll quickly recap what we did last week and then we'll move on. Yeah, I have to do our fights. I do have one of mine today. Okay, so we looked at the standing sort of free passes, which is knee slice, long step, and leg weaves. And we saw that you could do this from any sort of little sequence that you can make off and then this is the current strategy I use when I'm passing but it goes avoid any guards distance style mid style and tight pressure passing so we looked at these two last time um, distance style and mid range today we're gonna look at tight style passing but just to recap what we did so avoiding guards, that just means break grips, don't get caught in close guard or de la Hiva or spider guard and etc. And your most fundamental pass to avoid everything is the Toriada, which is this. Which the main um the main thing like the main thing I'll say about this is to be aggressive with it. You can only be aggressive you can only be successful with this pass if you're aggressive with it. Because as soon as the person puts spider guard on you or you're too slow, they'll set up their guards really easily. We have the knee slice, which is like the mid-range sort of pass. This is the most commonly used pass. And we saw Lucas Lepre doing it a lot. <laughs> and if you want to get good at knee slices, watch Lucas Lepre's videos on YouTube. Here's what I mean, avoid getting stuck on spider. If you do, make sure that you have a few passes there. It's just a quick one. Uh, another spider kind of attempt. And the main thing about this is don't pressure the spider guard. Just go away from it. Then we have our second type of mid-range pass. One of my favorites, the leg drags. This is just a basic entry that's probably not going to work, but <laughs> that's um, the leg drag position. So you can get really creative on how you get to this position. And then we have the most underused one in our gym, long step. <laughs> so starting off from a knee slice, the main thing here is to remember which grips are knee slice grips. This hand is on the hip and this hand's on the knee. That's a knee slice grip. And if someone's going to do a loose long step, they take the collar and they take the trousers. As the person countering, you should know this as well. So you can easily avoid the long step. And the main thing about the long step is try to stay as close as possible to your partner. So hug his head. And stay with your head very low. And you can combine this pass with all the other passes I talked about. 
Um, leg weave, it was our last little mid-range sort of pass. And it works in combination with those two. And that's just one example of it. But from the last lesson, you guys saw how effective these three were. We saw Lucas Lepre almost doing like three knee slices into leg weaves. And, he did, and we saw the Mendes doing a bunch of long steps. Okay, but today, um, pressure passing. <laughs> so when, like I said, I'd, you can focus your game entirely on pressure passing. A lot of people are very successful with it. But like I said, i would take this sort of chain. If my distance style isn't working, I'll move on to my mid-range. If the mid-range isn't working, then I'll move on to my pressure pass. Or I'll just mix them, match them. But I'd say the, there's lots of parts of these are free, right? But I wouldn't necessarily do them in this order. I think these should be all together, like on top of each other. But the easiest window you can have to kind of like get all of these style of passes is starting off with an over unders pass. So we have over unders, double unders. Three quarter style passing and forcing the half guard into the pressure sort of pass. So over on this pass, this is where you dive in into what looks like a triangle. But the key things about this pass is being tiptoed with your knees off the mat and tripod it up. Okay, my head is going to the far hip over here. You're hugging the hip around and you can grab onto the belt or you can grab onto the trousers. And this right arm here is very important. We're hugging very really tight and we're grab grabbing like the hem of the trousers right at the end. And your main goal here is to control your partner's hips. The flatter it is, the better. But we need to clear this knee. So this knee is a big problem here. So I'm gonna walk to the side first towards Kirstein's head. So I can stuff the knee and go above the knee line. So that was me sliding my knee above the knee line. So I can walk back to the middle and then I can clear the hook, okay? Morning, Rogerio. So that's the over on this pass, okay? Getting tight, make sure your head is glued. Walk to the side, stuff the knee and then back to the minning and then take leg off. It's already afternoon in Dubai. All right, so that's our over on this pass. Your main issues with the over on this pass is the triangle and the Kimura here. So the triangle is this here, where you're not controlling the leg. So the person's able to take this leg out and triangle you. And the only reason why that's going to happen is because you're not hugging this leg tight enough. Okay. Make sure that you're constantly like almost like squeezing the thigh in instead of just grabbing onto the material. So this is what not to do. And your other last trouble you're going to have is a Kimura, which comes from you trying to push the knee in with your hand like this All right so make sure when you dive in one you're making sure the leg is trapped two you're hugging really deep and three you're not pushing with your hands okay you're pushing with your biceps back to the middle and then you can step off and if you want like lots of details watch Bernardo Faria He's the one that's famous for this pass. And he has lots of nice little tips. Over unders best friend now. It's the double unders. So this is one of, the, in my opinion, the best passes to do on like flexible people. Which is this. There's like a hundred ways of finishing this move, but the traditional old school one is you reach for a cross grip, you grab the trousers. 
And I'm being nice to Christine here, but I would be tripoded up on top of her, putting loads of pressure. Not on my knees. And you can change to this anytime, um, anytime your over on this pass is not going well. Just like stick that arm in and you'll be double on this. With the over-unders, I know about the Kimura defense, but I also rode with someone where the guy on the bottom grabbed a collar and threatened his leg in with a choke. There's a choke that he can do there. Um, there's an over-unders pass. The main choke people are going to do to you, it's, it can be a loop choke. Or it can be, there's a little, I don't know what it's called, like a pocket sort of, <laughs> pocket sort of choke, right? If someone has this hand on their collar here, it's going to be quite difficult for you to get the pass. So you have to swim your head under the grip before you start the pass. Don't dive in with a collar grip underneath your neck, otherwise you're giving them sort of a dangerous loop choke. The choke he's probably trying to do that he passed the leg over. He's grabbing the other collar where he passes this leg to this side, if that makes sense. Um, it's not a very good choke. But you can get caught with it. You can do like, what I'd say to you, go double unders if someone's going for choke on you. So as soon as you realize they're going for double unders, just stick this arm underneath that and you should be able to stack them and they shouldn't be able to choke you but just be careful notice where their hands are if they have a really deep grip on your collar before you start your over on the pass just be careful a little bit but if you get to this position here and then they start trying to choke you you should be okay because it's too tight by them uh, moving, so that was the double on this pass. So like I said, you can transition to this anytime you want from the, the over-unders. If things aren't going well, just stack them instead. So this are the first little two. They're good because you can start them from a distance sort of position and just dive in for both of them. If you're playing against a tricky guard player, where he gets you in the Lahiva or Spider all the time. This is a good strategy to have. Just go straight for double wonders so they can't grab your sleeves. And then work on your passing from there. Now it's the free quarter style passing. It's like forcing sort of a half guard. Hold on. Double wonders, how do you stop opponent from walking their shoulders back? Pushing, it's, it's pulling them... Is this bit here. So they can always defend if they don't if if they don't let you bind their hands or grab onto something, you're probably not gonna be able to do this pass. Okay, if they flare their legs and you haven't got your hands connected or you haven't grabbed the belt, it's probably not gonna work. But if you do get your hands together or you grab onto the belt, just pull them into your hips like this. That's what stops them from shrimping. They get their hips on the mat, they can shrimp. If you got your knees underneath their hips, they can't shrimp. And then it's all pressure. So you grab the collar there, and you go tripod up. So I should be on my toes here. And then you just stack. If you stack them, they can't shrimp. They can only push you, which is very, it's a bit different. And it's going to be a battle of their legs trying to break your hands and etc. But it's just a slow grinding pressure. Don't rush the pass and go really slow. And three quarter style passing. This is where you force the hot. Like sort of like a... It looks like over-unders. But you're just forcing a butterfly position. And it doesn't matter if the person takes their leg out. Almost like they're going to close guard. And the main thing here is to control one of their legs, the leg that needs to come out. So this is almost close guard. She has to take this leg out to be close guard. 
and your whole goal is to keep that trapped. And then you've got various ways of passing. You can push the knee and just jump over. That's one. Wouldn't be the one I use, but it is one. But this is the free quarter style passing that I'm trying to explain. Um, there's loads of tricky way, like fancy ways of passing here. You can do a flip to this side. You can do a flip to this side. Lots of different scenarios. You can trap their shins. You can sprawl on this knee here and make it like a heavy hips pass. Which I'll show later. But this isn't a bad way of passing people's guard. You will get caught in close guard a lot because um, it would be out of practice. But um, once you get a hang of it, it's really good. Roger Gracie uses this a lot. He just forces you into the butterfly. And then starts tripoding and passing. Um, a nice little scenario is the forcing the half guard, which I mentioned. So, in this particular case, I'm just like doing anything to get into half guard. So here, I'm just dropping in. And straight away, we go into the smash sequence. This is really hard to explain and really hard to get good at, right? But there's two main things that you gotta stop. One, with this hand, you're controlling this knee the whole way through. So you you are gonna let go of this at some point, but most of the time you're gonna keep it for a long, long time. And then it's all to do with your hips and your chest to drive in. So watch my stunts there. So that's the stance you want to take. So you're almost like a dead whale on top of the person. I'm like on the side of my foot. I'm like got my knee angled and etc. And my hips are driving down. While this is stopping the guard pull. And all you want to do here. Is just make the person collapse their frame. Or collapse their knee. There's two things that are going to happen. They're either going to give up with their arms. Or there's a knee shield there, because she's on half guard. Or the knee's going to collapse down. And that's your whole goal. You're going to stay there until that happens. And then in that case, you see she collapsed her hands. So I was able to get a tight um, cross face. And then from our cross face scenario, we just follow our half guard sequence. Which is the first one's a hook back up. Tripod and pass. So this is another one I would focus on. Because this is a brilliant pass. And it gives you a way of resting while the person is still working twice as hard of you. Like on top it doesn't take much for the person to just lie their weight on you. And keep their hips heavy. While um, the person on the bottom, they have to be constantly pushing constantly shrimping and the worst thing that's gonna happen you're gonna get caught in half guard like that that's what Jerry was saying here he's taking, he's taking a picture of his TV <laughs> Jerry is learning all right so this is a sprawling sort of scenario all right so force the half guard, use your chest, use your hands to stop that guard pull. This is going to be your main, like, um, your main kind of problem here. People are going to constantly take this leg out and you'll be in close guard or something. But just force your way into that. Smashing your shoulder into their face. Yeah, you can. You're not going to make any good friends, but you can. Hugging the head is enough. You don't have to show the smash their face. <laughs> Alright, so this is forcing the half guard. Make sure you have a half guard plan when you get to this position. Alright, don't just get half guard and then stay there. Notice how I bring my knee up. 
and I position in the right stance to be able to like get a good half guard pass going on. And if you don't know any tight half guard passing, watch the half guard lesson that we did a few weeks back. And you should have a nice chain from there. Because you need to be good. Two, thing, two things you need to be good at when you're doing this style of passing. One is getting used to this base of smashing. And two is getting good at tight passing from here. Because if you're not good at this position, then they can get butterfly on you. They can get close guard. They can sweep you. Lots of bad things can happen. So make sure you learn both of them if you're doing this style of passing. It's a very underused style of passing, but I think it's really effective. And um, then we have half guard pressure chain. This is another sequence. So again, I force the half guard. I go into my sprawling stance. I hook the leg and I slide through. This is just another option. But again, there's so many different styles of passing. And if I was being strict, I did this a bit wrong. So I should be controlling this knee the whole time because there's a bit of space here. So with this pass, so think Gordon Ryan style passing. Your main goal here is to bring this leg forward so you can hook the back of uh, her ankle. So you can climb over the top. So in this case, instead of smashing the leg, the arms, and forcing the half guard, Christine kept her knee shield in the whole time. So I was only able to do this pass instead of the tight half guard passing. Knowing the difference of these two is very important as well. And then we have one of my favorite, the near side underhook passes. Not very used as much. But if you can smash the knee, and normally we're taught to get a cross face around the head most of the time. In this case, I'm going underneath this underhook. Which is this position there. And that just means uh, I just find this to be one of the best passes. You can keep the person flat a, a lot easier. And you're able to switch your base a lot easier without being bridged. So now I can switch my base. I can take my knee out. And then I can start double under sort of passing. Where you have two underhooks. Everything becomes easy when you get those double underhooks. But the only time you're going to be able to do this is one. If you can clear that knee shield. If you can't clear the knee shield, you can't do this pass. Switch your base and try put up. Okay. So, to recap. Over on this pass, what's our main two... Let's see if people get this right. What's our main two dangers from the over on this pass? What don't we want to get caught on? Kiwi, what's the answer? Right. And? What do you get caught when you do the over-unders? You do over-unders a lot. Yes, you do. Kimura on triangles, Christine. She doesn't... Pick. Yes, you do. I've seen you get kimura I get triangle, though. No, you get kimura as well. You get kimura and triangle <laughs> then over on this boss. Both of them. The good old duo. And she's not paying attention. You get the, the worst student on Star. Alright, so the triangle and the Kimuras, okay? The triangle comes from you not controlling this leg. And the Kimura comes from pushing the knee. And this is how Marianne Kimura do, by the way. Isn't it, Ginger? Because you need to learn your mistakes. That's why you need to keep track. You get used to it. 
Um, next up is our double unders pass. Uh, I'd use this when you're having a hard time against someone who plays open guard game. It's an easier way to like not get caught in their guard, basically. And even if things go wrong here, you're probably just gonna end up in like. Unless you're stubborn, you get triangled, but you just be like in guard again. So it, it doesn't matter if things go wrong here. Um, three quarter smash pass. This is where you're just forcing the butterfly position. And then you're working your way into the passing. Then we have um, forcing the half guard, which is one of my favorites. The other way you can get into the half guard is a lot of times, like I said, right? A lot of passes don't. We saw in the Lucas Lepre fight, right? A lot of passes that he tried didn't work, and he almost passed, and then suddenly he just ends up in half guard. So this is where this shines as well. So you've done all your standing passes and you've been connecting moves, but somehow you end up in half guard, go straight into this sort of style of passing. So that's our smash pass. Or even if you don't want to do the smash sort of passes and stuff, just have a plan from half guard because you'll get caught in here a lot. And as, as long as you have a plan, you will you'll be attacking and the person will be defending. And then, this uh, these are your two main options from the half guard that I'd go for. But again, there's like 20 million passes that you can go for. So one is the Gordon Ryan one. I think this is on YouTube as well if you want the full details. And then we have the near side underhook pass. This one's not as common, but it's really good. And there's indicators to go for each one of these moves. But I can't. Um, you'd be a different lesson. So this one, for example, right? I'm kind of forcing it here. So realistically, it would be difficult to get. But... The real time I'd go for this is when people sit up on their elbow. Because then you'll be able to get the near side on the hook a lot easier. Alright. So any questions about that before we move on? And then we're going to watch Murillo Santana smashing people. All good. Alright, so we have three little things there. Uh, hopefully this X combat doesn't flag my video. Alright, so Murillo Santana is like one of the most famous pressure passes in Jiu Jitsu. So he's the one in blue, this guy here. Whoops. And is he has he doesn't have an open game. He's just slow grinding until he passes. So his partner here pulls guard, and he dives in straight into sort of a over under style passing. So here's the first start. Right, this is an over under attempt. He's holding this. The guy fling his leg over the top, but that's our over under style passing. Notice how he doesn't let this leg come out. That's the main goal there. He's tripoded up onto his feet. Guy's pushing his face. And there's the first pass. Doesn't end up with a pass, but you can see. So that's our over on his attempt there. Didn't go as he planned. He got one advantage, I think. But now he ended up in the three quarter style passing, like I said. So this is the second sort of style passing that I was mentioning, where he starts on the sort of butterfly position. A little complaining of the ref here. And there you go. 
This is becoming... So this is still three quarter. Little tripod. The guy's trying to butterfly hook him. He's just following it up. Well, you can see... He doesn't get the position he wants. Like, tight control. Because the guy is so, like... He's using tremendous amount of energy to, like, kick him off and etc. But again, he's straight into it. He's just looking for an opening. He starts with a knee slice, mid-range style passing, and then he moves on to a tight passing. But focus on his base. His base is the thing that teaches you the most. He's always up on one leg, driving forward the whole time. This is the collar grip that I was mentioning to Steve earlier. He's going to probably try to loop choke him. That flared elbow. So now he's forcing the half guard. And he's got a nice shin wedge over there. That's a young Felipe Pena. I didn't know that. There we go. He starts his pass sequence again. Here we have a double unders attempt now. So again, he's just cycling through the pressure positions that I mentioned. Double unders, over unders, forcing the half guard. You barely see him doing toriadas and etc. But again, notice his base, he's always making the person on the bottom carry his weight the whole time. So here I'm pretty sure he's like just resting. He's trying to sneak under. Here's another pass attempt. So the over unders hasn't worked now. Double under, sorry. So he has to switch it up. But this is how his most of his fights go, right? You reach like the fight minute mark. And people on the bottom start getting tired. Because Felipe is constantly having to push, having to throw his legs over. And it's a lot, he's basically bench pressing him the whole time. He's just constantly like pu pushing him away. And eventually, people's arms die out or their legs die out. And that's when he usually gets the pass. There's another, this is over on his brothers now. See him always bench pressing. Here comes a smashing style pass. And there's forcing the half guard now. This is a near side pass that I mentioned. Where he gets this on the hook. Instead of the cross face. And now he's forced the half guard. And I believe that's the end of the match now. He just mounts him. Because he has that on the hook there. He can use his other arm to push the knee. I think he's just going to mount him. But Felipe, I think, recovers. <laughs> he's still in half guard. Again, Felipe's trying to bench press him now again. Then shrimp. And if you ever rode with someone that does pressure passing, you'll know how horrible feeling this is. If you rode with Tony in our gym, that's his style of passing and it's like the most tiring thing in the world on the bottom. Like you constantly have to push him and yeah, exactly. 
So he doesn't get the pass and we end up in the half guard here. Felipe is doing a hip clamp chain now. He f which is very smart of him. So this is that hip clamp guard now. So Murillo is having a hard time breaking his legs. That's the power of the hip clamp. So if you remember our half guard lesson. I told you guys if someone's trying to pressure you. Use the hip clamp guard. And now Marilla can't smash his legs basically. But he does anyway. <laughs> and again, look at that constant pressure. This is the smash pass that I was talking about before. Both of his legs are in between his. Just making him carry his weight. There's the windshield, there's the pass. He explodes, gives up the back to avoid the points. And I think that's the end of the match. That's it for the pressure sort of chain. But you can see, right, it took him um, around 9 minute marks to pass. But he's just constantly grinding. There's no rest for the person on the bottom. And that's what makes this successful. If you keep stopping and letting the guy rest, you need to make the guy's legs burn and his arm burn from just constantly trying to like, recover. And then essentially, like, eventually, they'll make a mistake and you can get a tight half guard control. Or you can get um, like a tight sort of position. This is our first example here. Uh, I have two. I have two quick examples here as well. This is one of mine. This is forcing the half guard. I'll skip to the bit. So I haven't had a very good luck passing from standing here. So I go into a mid-range style passing, which is like the knee slice. And I use my head as well. Which forces him to, do, to push my head away, which gives me an underhook. So this is that Murillo base that I was talking about. I keep my head underneath his. And all I want him to do is to push with his hand so I can get a tight underhook. Whoops. Which he does. There I'm pushing my face. That's me getting the underhook now. And then I'm able to bind my hands. And that just means now I can pressure my way. Takes a while but. I can just hug and squeeze. I can use my head. And slowly slowly. You can start kicking and pressuring. And you get the pass there. And then... Another... So this is the, the sort of forcing the half guard and then getting a thing. And the last one is... The over under style. So this is... This is that example. It was one of my matches from like a brown belt. This is when I used to use this sort of strategy here. Yeah. Dimension. Avoid guards, trying to go for distance style, mid-range. Then if that doesn't work, I go into my tight body. So he pulls guard. And he does like a Berimbolo attempt. I try to counter it by doing my own Berimbolo. But we both get nothing. And I stand up again. He gets up, I think, and he gets two points. That's one sweep for him. What's the time? Let's 
skip a bit from when I'm on top. Actually, I think we got time. That's just me trying off balance here. He does a really good job staying in base. There's him trying to double on this pass. I managed to grab a single on him. This is a double on this counter. Luckily, I do a lot of double on this. So he forces me to turtle here. I continued the turtle. Mainly because he off balanced himself in that direction. I think because of the adrenaline and stuff. But anyway. And I go straight into a single leg. Because I know he has to run towards my back. Which is a very good counter to like turtles. When he did run he gave me the single basically. I grab the far leg and I get like. Sort of a sweep. So he's constantly playing De La Hiva, so I have to get rid of De La Hiva first. There's De La Hiva. And now I go into my pressure pass. This is an over-unders attempt. There's me tripoding up. There's me stuffing the knee like I mentioned. Walking back to the middle. And there's me clearing the legs. And now I have to stay tight. That's the pass already. This is him bench pressing me. There's the pass. There's the back. So a lot of times when you finish the over on this pass, the last ditch that the person is going to try to do it's the turtle to give you that back so they don't get the points. This is what he did. So just be ready for that when you're going. Double wonders. I think he escapes here. I think he escapes. What? No, I go for a triangle. And I think then he escapes the triangle. Let me just see if I got another pass here. I think. No. I think I stay in the bottom now. I think I'm up on points, so I'm just, re just waiting out. <laughs> see if I do my half guard chain now. Just pulling guard. Here's my deep half chain that we mentioned. <laughs> I don't think I knew reverse half guard back then. <laughs> Maybe I do. No, I only know one sweep from there. <laughs> There's me going for the lapel sweep. Do you get the sweep? And I'm straight into my over on the style passing again. Stuffing the knee again. I'm not sure. I just don't have the date. I was a brown belt. So it must have been like three or four years ago. There's the Kimura attempt from him. There I left a little gap there on my over-unders. So he's able to get Kimura on me. I think I have a lapel there. So I wasn't really scared. I have a grip somewhere there.
And I think that's it. I think I'm just like wasting time, hoping that. Luckily, he's wearing spats there. I think the rest of the match will just stay in 50 50. And we play footsie there. But yeah, but this is like the dub one, the sort of style passing that I mentioned. <laughs> so we had three examples there. Uh, Murillo Santana doing pretty much dub unders, over unders, and smash passes. We saw forcing the half guard in this one, and we saw um, the overunders on this one. But you can see you can do really well by just following this sort of chain. Cool. <laughs> Two. One one of the mistakes on the overunders, I go for the color a bit too early. Yes, don't go. You're never going for the color if you're doing overunders. Just stick with near side on the hooks, it's always better. Um, what I mean is, if you're ever doing over unders, you see this arm here of mine? It's never going for the head. So it always stays underneath the arm. Then you won't get caught. Let's <laughs> remember that. Cool. Ugh. All right, let's put this on. Kiwi, what did you learn today? Need to Google what? <laughs> nice to work, guys. <laughs> That's it for the class, but if you want to hang around, you can. Let's see if there's anyone on Discord. I'm trying to get the old video back, but I think they're not going to give it back. I trimmed the flow grappling bit, but they're still being a bit of pricks about it. I lost my no. Rogero's got a class next if you guys want to join. I just recently got weights after like. You couldn't find any anywhere. <gasps> this was broken. Ginger, are you doing conditioning today? My student pull up got sent to the wrong address. <laughs> <laughs> I went to my um I went to visit my mom the other day and then in the backyard there was like a gold mine of weights that someone left there. And I told her that this is like worth five hundred pounds now. And she's like, What? Can't find it, weights anywhere anymore. And then I found like a. She didn't have the bar, she only had the weights bit. So I used like a piece of tent as the bar. And I'm using um, elastic. What, what's your hair, hair tires as clips? <laughs> I wasn't abusing him. He's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> the Kirsten sent you the video of him crying afterwards. <laughs> uh, he wants to play, right? And then he starts going crazy. I catch him in a triangle. He tries to escape. <laughs> Chokes himself. And then starts crying. <laughs> and five minutes later... He comes back again, wanting to play more.
He's like a giant baby. He's like, how old is he? He's six. And he like weighs like, how much does he weigh? What the heck? He's like the biggest baby. Oh my God. He's so like. <laughs> but his dad was really tall though. I hope he grows into it. Man, he's going to be like one of those little juveniles that fight only in the absolute. Because there's no, <laughs> there's no weight class for them. <laughs> he's going to be like... If he gets tall, then it'll even out. He'll be bigger than me when he grows up. He'll be like... By like 14, he'll be like... 80 kilos or something. She get him into jujitsu. He's just gonna squash everyone. He's just gonna teach him power, um, pressure passing the whole like time. He's gonna be the best pressure pass in the world. You've never seen kids doing pressure pass. He's gonna be the first one. You see him in the London Mob. You know when those kids were fighting. Remember that little blonde kid? They go to competition with his dad. Oh, that really. Good one? Yeah, but he's like chubby. chubby. Yeah, he's like really chubby. It's like this chubby kid that just smashes everyone. It's gonna be Mateos. <laughs> <laughs> what else is pass? What else is new? You beating everyone on Strava, Ginger. Bye bye, Lee oh, Staker. Does it not hurt your knees? I run, I walk for like 30 minutes and my knees starts to hurt. You walk for five minutes. And I, I sit and it hurts. Oh, you got a bike now. Bike must be more fun. I used to get shin splits all the time. I heard it's because you walk uphill or something. Shoe type? You can get, my aunt Ginger can get across the country a lot easier now. Last time she was just walking <laughs> across the whole of London. Now she can bike everywhere. China's just like nothing on Reddit anymore. For Jiu Jitsu. Where are these like competitions coming from? Like a bunch of <laughs> come visit. <laughs> Gonna have a secret rose. <laughs> Do you guys have mats there? <laughs> you guys been rolling on the hard surface. I thought you had mats, or was it not you? If you use a carpet, and it's still, well, it's better than the park. <laughs> you mean to get one of those roll out mats and just take it to the park, start rolling. How'd you guys do? <laughs> Ginger rolled to Sophia in the park the other day. On the first roll, she manages to hurt her knee. <laughs> what the hell? That's gonna be like half of the gym as soon as they come back from Jiu Jitsu. 
they won't know how to like move my knee, my elbow. I just, I just found a <laughs> Oreo check highlight on um, on Reddit. Yeah. Oh my god. Ah, that's bad. <laughs> Look at this. Wait, I'll link it in. Otherwise. people watching you guys like what the fuck are they doing I was cursing like two times and everybody that walked past was like what is that <laughs> Right, I'm gonna end the stream. Otherwise, it'll be too long. Ginger, you're in conditioning or no? It's a highlight. Oh, oh checks. It's where people put their fingers up your butt in wrestling. <laughs> Look at the link. I'll send it to you. What? What's a the harp song? Cool ginger. Oh yes. 